Hey everybody, my name is Virginia Willis and welcome to Cookbooks with Virginia. Do you want to know all about how to make sheet cake? Do you remember sheet cake when you were a kid? The little perfect squares of cake? Oh my God, so good. I remember that. Now, a lot of you know that I have gone on this tremendous health journey and I've lost 65 pounds and kept it off for over a year. And yeah, I'm thrilled about that. And I'm super thrilled about the fact that this month's issue of um, Eating Well on their weight loss success story, super cool, very honored to share. And then I've got a really great article that I'm proud of this week in the AJC. Weight loss can include delicious food. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And yes, that means cake, right? Who wants a world without cake? That's what I don't, I don't want that world. So I am so excited this week to have on Cookbooks with Virginia, Abby Dodge, author of Sheet Cake, recently tapped by the New York Times as one of the best cookbooks of the year. And y'all, this book is, it's genius. It's just flat out genius. It's one of those no nonsense, get to the facts, ma'am, recipes that work, Recipes that are clear, and it's written by Abby Dodge. Let's bring her on and say hey to Abby. Hey, Virginia. Hey, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's absolutely my pleasure. It's great to see you. Oh, I'm so glad, and I'm so glad that we were able to do this. And I love the, uh, the, um, the, you know, I don't know what the word exactly is, the, the combativeness of me like wanting to feature cake and this week that everyone's featuring, you know, lemon juice and cayenne pepper. <laughs> it's true. But as you say, you know, everyone should eat cake. You know, we've talked about it. I talk about it all the time because of what I do for a living. Everything in moderation, you know, and cake and baking itself is very soothing and healing, which I think is what this time of year is for. So, you know, as I, as I kind of like to quote Elle Woods from, well, I misquote her, but I say, uh -huh. you know, baking gives you endorphins, endorphins make you happy, and happy people make other people happy. So, oh, I love that. No, you know, no. Bake away, people. That is so cool. So, Abby, I know of you, of course, and we've just known each other a while, and I'm familiar with your incredible work. Will you share, please, a little bit about your story for the folks that are watching today? Yikes. How long do you have? Um, <laughs> let me give you the short yeah, give story. Um, yeah, give it, give I started out in the food world, you know, when I was a little girl, I used to bake with my mom. And <clears throat> when it came time to choosing something to do for the rest of my life, you know, as my mom said, you're going to have to work. So I'd love you to love whatever it is. I realized I really loved to cook and I loved to bake. Mm -hmm. I went to Paris to our, we're both alums of La Varenne and <clears throat> started out in the restaurant world um, and then moved over into editorial work. I worked at all the women's service magazines, which was such an amazing foundation for editorial work. You really understood it. Um, fast forward to Fine Cooking Magazine. I founded their, uh, their test kitchen a number of years ago. And up, up to date, I've written 11 cookbooks. Wow. Cake. And uh, it's really, it's been a wonderful ride. The food world is a wonderful world. I couldn't recommend it more highly. The people are generous and kind and giving like Virginia Willis. <laughs> and, um, Back at you, you know, it's great. It's been, it's been a great ride. You no, know, well, and you've contributed a lot. Well, thank you for your kind words. And yes, big shout out to Ann Willen. We're both, we're both uh, offspring of, of Lava Ren and, yeah, that that experience. I think it's um, that'll take us off probably into another subject for another day. But I, that you know, if when we when we think about the sort of power brokers in American food, so often people imagine uh, the the men in the white shirts, but in uh, not not that kind of white shirt, but you know the the men in the in, in the in the coats. And in reality, the people that affect how Americans eat probably more than anything are are food editors at magazines. Wouldn't you agree? Absol absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's it's really, and learning from one of the masters of that was 
Elizabeth Alston back at Woman's Day. Um, mm -hmm. She was an incredible mentor. Martha Holmberg at Fine Cooking, uh, yeah. who brought humor and excitement into into the world of editorial work. It's really it's really great. It's really fun. Lots of no, places. it is. So let's talk about your book. So let me just tell everybody first of all, um, if you haven't seen it, you got to You got to pick up a copy. And you can win a copy if you go to my Instagram feed and you're going to see the instructions. And you're going to follow me and follow Abby. And I just this book, is, like I said in the beginning, it's just sort of like no nonsense, easy one pan recipes for every day and every occasion. Boom. There you go. Um, yeah. You know, the whole idea behind it was this sheet cake, this sheet pan that everybody's been using for the last five, four, five, six years for sheet pan dinners. Yep. And then I thought, well, why aren't we using this more for desserts? And yep. of course we all know sheet cakes. We've, you know, a Texas sheet cake is kind of my dream come true. Yes. Just pass the fork over. But, um, you know, I thought it it's really can be so much more versatile than just a single layer. Um, so I have three in the book. There are three types of cakes. There's the classic, which is mm -hmm. a classic sheet cake, just a one layer beauty, um, or you can take that same layer of cake and cut it out into rounds or rectangles and make what you think of as like a traditional cake, um, <clears throat> layered cake, one, two, right. three, and then put, you know, things on it and stuff, or you can roll it up just like grandma's old jelly roll. Um, I know. I love that. I love that. I love a rectangular cake. And what I think is so interesting about it is that there's this like this almost perception that it's a little fancier, right? It's like more like a, almost like a pastry chef, pastry shop sort of feel to it. Cause you know, we, we think, oh, is it a square pan? Well, no, of course it's not a square pan. This, the chef is simply, she is, he or she is simply, uh, has cut that out. So, um, so the, re your, the reception to it has been amazing because I think it just like sheet case, this book fills a need for people that want dessert, but don't want super over complicated things. Is that, what would you say about that? Yeah, and I, th I think, and from what I've heard over the years from readers is that cake baking, you know, especially once you're talking about layered cakes is can be very intimidating. So many pans, how do you make the layers even? How do I know how much batter to put in each one? Right. You know, and let's face it, you know, if you have three, if you want to make a three layer cake, well, that would mean that you'd have to have in your apartment or whatever, you'd have to have room for three cake pans. Right. Um, and this way, we just have one pan which slides, you know, into the oven when you want to store it. Um, it's easy to handle. And then you don't have to worry about any of this. You just pour all the batter right into that pan, uh -huh. spread it out, and then you can cut your layers or, or you can roll it up as the recipe directs. Or as we said, you can just slather on some icing onto that single layer and serve it up. It's really, it, in my mind, it makes, it takes a complicated process and boils it down to easy, doable steps. Ah, look There's at that. Jelly roll. <laughs> look at that, I know it. And then let me show them some of the photographs. So this is the pretzel crusted caramel vanilla cheesecake. Wow. Oh my gosh. Sour, salty, bittersweet. You got a little bit of everything going on there. I think, and of course I'm not surprised in the least that I love this one chocolate cake with orange buttercream and look at those segmented oranges right there on top. Yum. Um, so y'all it's written in, uh, you've got it written in, in, in American measurements and grams Serving and storing, cutting the cake, covering the cake, classic cakes. You've got carrot cake, double chocolate mousse cake, oh, peaches, peach studded pound cake. I got to say that one, right? Oh, yum. So you got some tried and true recipes. Um, were these recipes that you sort of had in your back pocket? Or tell me about your recipe development for some of these. <clears throat> so, um, what I, I definitely wanted to do some classic combinations because that's the whole point, right? We want to take those classic things that 
that some people are intimidated to make in multiple pans and right. put them into this sheet pan. So I went with the classics. Um, and then, you know, as kind of is my way, I like to kind of, you know, switch it up a little bit. Yeah. So um, there are some fun combinations. There's some peanut butter combinations. There's hazelnut. Wow. Um, but I think it's also important to mention that the, the whole the, the whole reason we have all of the cakes in the three separate sections, and then we have the frostings in a separate section. So you can really decide what, yeah, the mix and match thing is so great. And to me, that's what sparks creativity, giving mm -hmm. readers permission. Hey, I've used, you know, the vanilla frosting with this, but if you want to use the caramel or the mocha one, do it, do it, do it that's with that peanut right. butter cake. Um, no, and it's great because you've got the measurements so that people can do that, right? It really is, in my mind, I mean, it's kind of interesting because it, you're saying, oh, you're thinking like a chef, which makes it sound more complicated, but in all reality, it's simplifying things, right? It's like making, yes. making batters multi-purpose, making icings multi-purpose, understanding, frankly, like if someone wanted to use this book, it's like, oh, well, this batter makes whatever, three cups. I know that I can make, uh, I'm not going to try to do the math, you know, 12 larger muffins out of that, right? It's like just kind of understanding the, the, the framework of a recipe. Exactly. And I think that um, something that I liked, I emphasized in the book, and I always like to remind people is that this isn't about being this book or really any of my recipes, but especially this book. It's not about being perfect. So many times I hear, oh, it's not perfect. It doesn't look like yours. Well, I, it's not, I, I've been in this business 300 years. It's, <laughs> it's not going to look like mine, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, my, my new motto has been imperfect is the new perfect because it's not what it looks like. You know, I, I had a reader who made the gingerbread and cranberry. Exactly. Virginia. It's what it tastes like. And I've had disasters, you know, and I had one reader over the holidays who, who emailed me and said that she made the ginger um, bread cake with the cranberry frosting. And she said, boy, Abby, it didn't look a thing like yours, but it sure did taste great. And that's right. the point. That is the, the point. point. Isn't to, you know, and, you know, being willing to improvise, we touched upon it on the frostings and encourage people to improvise and to say, oh, wow, my jelly roll cake broke when I tried to transfer it. Well, that's happened to me. Hello. Oh, hey. You know, hey, and yeah, then what can you do? chop it, it all up, put it into a glass and make it a parfait, you know, uh, it's all good. It's cake. It's, it's going to taste great. That is so true. And I love that. And, you know, I think in this like social media, perfect world where you see these like Instagram worthy, beautiful cakes or beautiful pies. Of course, my favorite, just kidding, are these like elaborate raw pies with all the decorations and stuff. I'm like, girl, I want to see that thing after it's been baked. Right. <laughs> uh, but with cakes too, like they're these like perfect cakes. And first of all, you don't know what they taste like. Second of all, they may not be real on the inside after all, you know, it really is like the, we, there's this, uh, um, perfection is presented as something that's like readily attainable. Cause it's just right there on your phone. Right. And it's not readily attainable, but what is readily attainable are like really good and delicious recipes that yeah. taste great. So yay, that's fun. So let's um, so let's talk about the 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 part where you know I was talking in the beginning where um you know cake and I've weight loss and all this kind of stuff and everyone is uh, surprised that I'm talking about cake. I feel like that cake is part of a healthy meal plan. I think. All food groups are part of a healthy meat meal right. plan. Um, I, I really am a firm believer on that. Um, and I believe, as we said, everything in moderation. Yep. And again, it's not about, in, in my mind, and I speak for myself, it's not about staying on a strict, strict, strict diet. Right. It's about living your life and yep. enjoying your life. And that should include a piece of cake should include a brownie. It should include, yeah. I don't know, whatever your heart's desires and learning how to balance that, that all out. And yeah, again, I'm not perfect with that. Um, nobody is there, yeah. are, you know, 
But to deny uh, something as delightful as a piece of cake is a shame. It, and and I, I don't think people really should. I think cake honestly makes people happy. Um, no, I do too. And I, and I also think, you know, um, one of the things that I don't want to dwell on the negative, I'd much rather talk about these beautiful recipes. Look at that red and black cake. You may notice I'm wearing red and black because the Georgia Bulldogs are playing in the national championship on Monday. Um, but, you know, the uh, let's talk a little bit about portioning, right? Because that is something like I've been working on and I'm asking you cook to cook, right? Like, let's talk about like, so um, you have a sheet cake and it serves whatever, like 16 people, but gosh, it's just me and, a, and, a, and my family and there's only four of us. What are your suggestions with that? Like, what are, what are your ways of sort of navigating the need for cake, the desire for cake, and the fact that cake serves so many people? The need for cake, I love it. So here's my secret. There's a need for cake. Oh, trust me. <laughs> I know. You do know. <laughs> um, so here's my secret. And I encourage everybody to, to take advantage of this. That's what your neighbors are for. Um, that's what your neighbors are for. You know, uh, get, I give away, you know, I save a piece. I pass a piece over to my spouse if he's around and, and he'll kind of with the fork and I'll say, no, 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 it's not ready yet. And that's what my neighbors are for. When my kids were little, I used to literally put, you know, food, whatever it is, whether it's a pot roast or a, a cake or brownies, whatever it is that I'm working on, I would put it in the back of the car, in the trunk. I'd go to the bus stop. I'd open up the trunk at the end of the day and I'd say, who wants what? Yeah. And, you know, because it's it's not a waste. Um, no, I mean, when you're recipe testing, it can get kind of crazy with stuff. And <laughs> but and I feel it's the same thing when yeah. you're when you're thinking, OK, you know, I haven't made a cake in a couple of weeks. It's time for cake. And <clears throat> if you don't want to have it around because it's just too much for you, I get that. Yeah. Give it to a neighbor's get take it to the bus stop. Um, you know, schools nowadays, they don't want that homeless shelters. Yeah. Um, if it's savory, they'll want that. Um, but, you know, they do try and stay away. And obviously, yeah. with all the stuff that's going around, you have to be a little bit careful. Um, but I believe in making friends with sharing your cake. So no, that's a great. That's a great idea. That's a that's a wonderful idea. So y'all this week, I'm so excited. I've got on Abby Dodge, author of Sheet Cake. Tapped by the New York Times is one of the best books of last year. And I'm, I'm a resoundingly endorsing it as well. Not, not that we're on the same tier, but it's just a great cake. Really fantastic recipes. Oh, look at that beautiful Bush de Noel sort of situation. So pretty. So pretty. And um, and let's talk a little bit about the, the rolled cakes, because I think that that is something that like just terrifies people. So what are some tips and techniques that you have on making this splendid, extra fancy looking little bit of perfection. And let's talk about pans. Okay. Um, let's talk about pans first and then okay. we'll go in. So okay. all of these recipes use what is termed a half sheet pan. This show and tell, this yep. is a half sheet pan. Um, this is, these recipes do not use what is I think technically called a jelly roll pan. Um, the jelly roll pan will technically be smaller. Yes. So you wanna make sure that you have a half sheet pan, 13 by 18 inches. Um, I get them at the restaurant supply store. It's aluminum, it's nice and sturdy, it's not warped. Um, and that's, it's really, really important to start with the right pan. Um, when we're talking about um, jelly rolls, uh -huh. um, there's a reason why, Virginia, I put the, the jelly roll chapter, the rolled cake chapter at the end of the chapters before, because I think it's something that, yes, people are intimidated by it. It seems a little scary. And frankly, it takes a little while to get used to that idea. So if you start with basic sheet cakes mm -hmm. in the classics, and then move up to the stacked, you, you're more comfortable ha handling this big pan and taking it out of the oven and flipping it upside down on, yeah. your, you know, you get used to it. So then when it comes time to do the jelly rolls, uh, you're taking your jelly roll out of the oven, 
and sprinkling it all over with confectioner's sugar. I cover mine. My mom used to cover it with a tea towel. Love that expression. I use paper towels. I, I know it's in. No, that, tell me why. That's awesome. Well, because you're covering. So I use the paper towels, a straight press, it, put them across and it's all covered. And then I invert it. And that's that's the leap of faith. OK, right. That's the moment when you say, yes, I can do this. I am a powerful baker. Yes, I am big and strong and I can do it. And I also know that if it doesn't, something happens, it's all going to be OK. Remember, it's just cake. It's just cake. Work. Um, and then, so the reason why I use the uh, paper towels is because when you do invert and take this off, the pan off, and you're rolling it up in the paper towels, right? So it, you have layer a layer of paper towels, layer of confectioner's sugar, and the layer of hot cake. Um, <clears throat> if you use a tea towel when it comes time to unroll it, you have a tea towel, my pretty little tea towel here, that is covered in confectioner's sugar. Wow. And... I think it's just a mess. Now, my mother did it all the time. It's certainly more environmentally friendly, but <clears throat> for those occasions that I do make a roll cake, I like taking off the paper, the paper towel, scooping it up with all of that confectioner sugar and tossing it in the bin. There you um, go. So that's that's why that's the paper towel part of that. No, um, that's great. And it, and it needs to, and it, it does two things. So you're sort of training the cake to roll it. So that you can, so it'll set and cool that way. And then also you want something there that's going to absorb a little bit of that steam being produced by the cake. Yes. Um, and again, paper towel, tea towel, same thing, different process. And the important thing, the um, really the important thing to do and to remember when you're making a jelly roll, a sheet cake, a roll cake, um, is to do it when the cake is warm, right out of the oven. So it's hot. The pan is yeah. hot. Yeah, um, I put in lots of reminders. Remember, it's hot, um, but it's important because that's when the cake um, is most pliable. And so right, you want to right, make sure right, you right, do it right. it's warm. Um, now, again, there are some recipes out there that, and again, this kind of goes to following the instructions. Some recipes out there, um, not the ones in sheet cake, but there are recipes out there that say, hey, for this cake, cool it before you roll it. Uh -huh. um, I'm a firm believer in following directions. Um, I'm, I am kind of a rule follower. So I like, you know, I'm not trying to tell anybody that other people's recipes have to be rolled when they're hot, but the recipes in sheet cake, if you're making a roll cake, you need to roll them when they're hot. I've never, yeah, I can't imagine how I understand. Okay, here we go. I'm going to talk, let's talk about some folks that are here. We've got Beverly is here. And my mama is here. She's super excited. And then she's got a comment. I'm going to give my mama an extra special shout out. My mama, Virginia grandmother, used a tea towel. Yes, she did. All right. And then Beverly is here. So lovely to hear real people talk realistically about cake making and love of all things cake. You are in the right place, Beverly. That's the truth. And Natika is saying that we've got healthy boundaries. Jimmy Prophet, imperfect is rustic. Oh, I love that. I love that a lot. All right, we have a question from, from Lena and we may need to double check. Uh, do you happen to know the restaurant half sheet pan um, dimensions? Let's see, you probably got it in your book if you don't have it in your head. 13 by, nine, by 18. Yep, 13 by 18 by one inch. It's on page nine <laughs> of sheet cake. So that's the deal, that's another reason. So it's not just a book of recipes, y'all. And, and good cookbooks aren't just, uh, you know, beautiful photography. Newsflash, good cookbooks are good recipes that also have good photography. And along with those good recipes, in my mind, and of course we come from this like, you know, Ann Willen or Ann Willen prodigy, is that the recipes are tested. The recipes are well-developed. The recipes are well-written so that when you're reading these recipes, you feel like that Abby is standing there right beside you, the lady that's made 300,000 cakes. She's standing there right beside you, helping you make your cake. So bravo, Abby. It's a, gr it's a really great book. Thanks. And, you know, Virginia, I love hearing from readers. I put it in the book, you know, go to my website. There's a little button that says Ask Abby. I um, saw that. I love if that. If you have a question, email me. I, you know, as, as long as, as the gods in the, in the interwebs, you know, all connect, I'll get that email. I will respond um, because that's what I'm here to do. I think that, you know, naturally 
my instinct is teaching. Yeah. Um, I think of myself as a teacher and instructor. So that's my job. Um, yeah, it's to write the book, the recipes in the book and to do things like that. But it's also to respond to students and readers questions. Uh, that's how we all learn. That's how I learn how to write maybe a more complete recipe um, or, hey, you know, someone has a problem. How can I fix that problem for that person? Yes, that's, you know? that is it. Because, you know, when you've messed that up, it may have been an unfortunate mistake or an accident or something was different with the ingredients. And um, if, if you just like quit and throw that out, you're just throwing away money. So it's like, once again, going back to like thinking like a chef, like how can you save it? And it's great that you can... Um, share people tips and techniques about that. I would love for you to share with us the, the, the frosting situation that we talked about, because um, you've got a great idea for how to stabilize whipped cream, which is like the dead easiest thing to do for a filling for a cake. And I'd love to hear you share that with, with our viewers. Sure, sure. Um, so in the book, in the back of the book, there are so many frostings, um, American buttercream, you know, uh, ermine buttercream, which is, I love. There's also ganaches. There's all sorts of different fillings. Um, but what I, there, I also included a whipped cream frosting and filling. Um, and it's not just any old whipped cream because as any of you have known that if you whip whipped cream, it doesn't stay forever. It's gonna eventually just start weeping out and be not, not usable. Um, so in, so in order to stabilize it, I've, for this whipped cream, I've added mascarpone cheese. Um, I get a container that looks like this. It's a tub. Mm -hmm. It's a very thick, um, Italian, slightly tart, tangy, I would say. Mm -hmm. And what that does, and it's thick, um, uh, it stabilizes the whipped cream. Um, I have whipped up my cream. Uh -huh. um, this is just very simply, it's some mascarpone. Uh, heavy cream, a little confectioner sugar. Okay. I give a measurement for the confectioner sugar, but if you've got a sweet tooth, you can bump it up. Again, if you, if you don't, you can bump it down. Yep. Um, and salt. Please don't ever forget the salt um, because that's what's going to highlight the flavors. And I've whipped it up until it's nice. And mm, it also has vanilla extract in it too. I just smelled that and forgot that I mentioned it. it. Um, I want to spoonful of that. What? I want a spoonful of that right now in my mouth. <laughs> I won't do it. No, no, do it. you can do whatever you want. It's, we can do it. whatever you want. That's what um, you so we can use this frosting this way, or I've given for the uh, vanilla, whipped vanilla mascarpone frosting, I've, I've given a bunch of variations, including um, adding jam to flavor, to give it a fruit flavor. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that here pull this back a little bit. Let me, let this is a half a recipe. I give the recipes for the frostings in full recipes yes. as well as half recipes. Um, that's because, you know, sometimes for different cakes, you're going to want different things. And as you can see, I'm just kind of folding, gently folding this in. Now I've used strawberry, but mm -hmm. sky's the limit on, on what you want to add to this. You know, if you want to add blueberry, if you're doing the a summer cake, and you think you've got a bunch of fresh fruit and blueberry would be a, a good complement to a lemony layer cake. That you're oh, doing. I'm just thinking cake. blueberry lemon yellow cake sounds like it would be so Doesn't nice. it? Yeah. And you know, anything from, you know, sour cherry jam, anything, whatever you have in your fridge. And uh, this is great. So y'all, okay. So this is the, the back section. Um, and Abby, let's talk about this. This book is obviously, uh, available, you know, at the big A and BN.com and stuff like that. Are there any, I just want to ask you this, if, if anyone, and uh, do you have any bookstores that you work with specifically or the best place for people to buy your books is to go to abbydodge.com? Yeah, you can go to abbydodge.com. That will, there are links there that will take you to the big A one. Um, but, uh, you know, I am a firm believer in, you know, local is local yeah. is local. Yeah, and we know that anthropologies across the country are also carrying the book. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's Damn, um. Bro. But like I know in my town in Connecticut, you know the some of the local stores were carrying it. Like the dress shop, the local really great yeah. fun Capri dress shop was carrying it, and and I that's what I like doing. That's I, yeah. I encourage people to to do that. So 
I'm going to just taste this. Yes. Um, just please taste that for us and talk about how this looks. looks. Doesn't that look good, y'all? Okay. So let me just tell everybody classic in the frostings and fillings chapter, you've got classic cream cheese frosting, flavor swaps, peanut butter, brown sugar, honey, and cranberry jam. So it's not just one recipe, it's like five recipes. Next one whipped chocolate ganache, flavor swap, espresso, milk chocolate, white chocolate. So you've got a filling or a frosting and then like just hey guys if you take this out you take one cup of this out and you put one cup of this in you got a completely different thing it's the same technique it's the same recipe but different ingredients and yes exactly and uh, that simplified things again we've been talking about that um because once you make that that frosting or filling once you make it once oh well i know how to do that but I don't want coffee today. I want something else, but I already know how to do it. So I'm already feeling more confident with that recipe. Right. And, you know, giving people options, um, you know, as I said before, giving people permission and encouraging them to do it their own way to, and, yeah. and you know, here are my guidelines, here's some guidelines, yeah. but like we were just making that filling. If you want to add a little bit more jam, Oh, by all means, please do. You know, it's, 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 empowering i hope that you know all the different flavor swaps and things like that no that's that is that's so funny you use that word because i was just thinking like education leads to empowerment right so because people get so scared you know people are scared of desserts and baking and cooks and you know cooking and you know they'll bake a cookie but a cake just seems like a whole other thing well it, it's they're not that different right like making a cake is uh is 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 not really all that complicated and then when you have it so simplified I, I think that's the part that i love it the most the fact that you're using this sort of like sheet cake they're using this rolled aluminum pan that can ro roast a chicken or make a cake it it sort of levels the playing field from the get-go you don't feel like you have to have you know any special equipment um and things like that so uh, what are your tips for like transporting cakes? I mean, do you have any thoughts of that? Like when, when people are making cakes and, 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 and taking them places, do you have any, um, any tips and techniques that people can learn from your book here? One of the things that I love about making a cake in a sheet pan, it's its own vehicle. Yes. Like if you're doing a single classic layer, it can literally go in the pan that you are baking it in and serve it right out of the pan, um, <clears throat> which I think is is brilliant. You know, I mean, it's just it's, it's just like the old sheet cake days. No, um, but, it's awesome. It, and yeah. when it comes to covering like a sheet pan cake, if the, one of the classics, um, I have a couple of these, but if you have a second one, just turn it upside down, turn that cake, not the cake, turn your empty sheet pan upside down on top, stored in the most of them are stored at room temp i think like the cheesecake one has to be stored in the refrigerator um <clears throat> but just do something like that um Super and hard. the other thing that if you're doing like the roll cake or mm -hmm. the um one of the stacked cakes something that i've been doing for years now is if i'm taking it to uh, someone's house or if, even if i'm taking it to the beach or something i'll cut it in advance so my roll cake comes out and I will do careful slices, whether, and I show you a couple of different ways to slice yep. that roll cake yep. on the angle as, as, as like a little triangle or in just regular squares. And then maybe I'll just dust a little extra confectioner sugar over it. And then it's ready to serve. You're not saying to, you know, your host is, excuse me, do you have a knife I can use? Right, excuse right, me. right. It's all set. It's ready to go. All you need yes. is that is so perfect both of those suggestions like uh super smart dead easy practical great knowledge and in my mind that's what this book is like you've just got just super super great we've got um beverly is saying um if it weren't snowing i was stuck in the boonies i'd be running to the bookstore so well there you go beverly that's awesome abby i want to thank you so much for coming on today it's been an absolute delight to talk to you oh thank you virginia it's really been fun to see you i think it's yeah. been a few days Yay, yay, yay. Awesome. Well, congratulations on your book. And then y'all, if you have any questions um, or you want to follow up with Abby or find anything more about her, please visit abbydodge.com. And Abby, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Great to see you. Good to see you too. 
Yay, y'all. Oh my gosh, I want cake. I do want cake. And um, I think it's uh, one of the things that I laugh about is like sometimes on these like weight loss things, like people are like, oh, I made cake. It was like fat free cake mix and zero point diet Sprite. And that just makes me sad because that's my cake. That's a bucket of chemicals. But you can make cake. You can make cake with this great book called Sheet Cake. And I want to thank y'all so much for watching today. Everybody um, have a great weekend and um, I'll see you next week. We've got lots and lots of great guests coming up this winter. Um, thank you so much for watching. Bon appetit, y'all. And go dogs. Go dogs. All right. Bye-bye now.